Yo, yo, yo. Alright. We're going to clamp the Smart Base 5. See how much power we're actually getting to the 15s. Got my GoPro. I can record all the readings as I write them down. Maybe this will stay on there. Got the clamp meter and the volt meter. What we'll do is we'll come in the back here. And I got access to it right here. We'll go ahead and film the readings. I'll do a test tone, pause it, write it down, move down to the next uh, frequency, do it again. We're going to run it from 32 down to probably 28, maybe 34 to 28. And yeah, we'll calculate it and we'll see how much power it's actually putting out. So this is my little chart that I made. We're gonna go from 28 to 34. We'll record the voltage and the amps. Then we're gonna calculate it to find the ohm load that it's rising to and how many watts it's putting out. Now to find the power, the watts, we're gonna take the voltage and the amps, multiply them, and that'll give you the watts. Then we're going to divide the amps by the voltage to find the ohm load. So let's start getting our test tone ready. We'll find where it clips at. We'll turn it down to where it's clean power. And we'll get it. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and set the high pass and the low pass filter. And what I do for these on the low pass, say I want it to start cutting out at 45 hertz. I'll play a 45 hertz test tone and then I'll start cutting up the low pass until I hear it start cutting out sound. Then I'll back it off just a hair where I know it starts cutting out around 45. On the high pass, which is the subsonic filter, same thing. Uh, say I want it to start cutting at 22. I'll turn it up some. I'll start lowering it with a 22 hertz test tone. And whenever I hear it start cutting sound out, I'm going to keep it right there so I know it starts cutting at 22 hertz. Um, that's the way I do it. I don't have any equipment to set it, so that's how I do the high pass and low pass. So we'll go ahead and do that, get it set, and that'll be it. Alright guys, here's the results after testing. Um, so to start off with, the head unit was set at 35 through the whole thing. I didn't mess with the base knob or the volume at all. I could have turned it up more as I went up in frequency and got more power out of it. 
but right there at 28 hertz that's what it's going to be pretty much all around the highest it's going to clamp is probably 2100 watts that was with it drop in into the mid 12s i glanced back and seen it at 12.9 i think that was at 30 hertz so i know it's dropping a little bit lower at the 28 but yeah 28 hertz 2135 watts at 2.2 ohms so the box likes it down low which i've still got a lot of headroom on the amp so even if say i wanted to burp it at 33 say if my peak was at 33 or 34 the gain's only up halfway on the amp and i mean i've seen the amps clamp five six thousand watts so it ain't nothing to turn the gain up more so this is on a 370 amp alternator with just one AGM battery. Basically no reserve at all, just one single AGM. So that's what it is. I told y'all it wasn't that much. I had a couple people thinking it was three, 4,000 watts, 2,135 watts. And right at tuning, tuning is at 30 hertz. It was clamping 1,800 watts at two and a half ohms. Like I said before, if you want to find out your wattage, take your AC voltage and multiply it by the amps on the clamp. And that's how you get the watts. And you can divide the amps by the voltage to find your ohm load. It's a pretty easy test. You just got to get your volume set and everything. This is without clipping. So there's no clipping at all. I could have pushed it a little bit more if I wanted to clip it or drop it down to the low 12s. Um, at 30 hertz, I'd say I could probably have got 2200 watts out of it, maybe 2300. But I was trying to just see what I could get with clean power. That way, so when I add some battery and get some reserve, uh, I know what I gained. So when I add a little bit of lithium, either I'm going to do a 64 amp hour headway or I'm gonna do two of the down for sound LTO 6.0s. And I think on a burp, I'll probably be able to clamp 35, 4,000 watts. So if I'm doing like a 149, like I think I am on roughly 2,000 watts, then I don't see why I can't do a 151, 152. I think the goal is going to be a 152 with this build around 4,000 watts or whatever the sample put out pretty much whatever battery reserve I have. So it's all going to mount on the lithium that I put in it. I don't want to put a huge bank in it. It's going to be something small, something that'll fit back there where that one AGM's at. And yeah, I want to be able to demo around 2,500, 3,000 watts. You know, play through whole songs without it clipping. And I want to be able to burp around 4,000. So, yep, next step is to meter it. We'll see what it meters. And, uh, and we'll go from there. One more thing before I go. I know everybody's been seeing Carlos do that single 18 sub experiment. Um, I'm thinking about doing a 15 inch sub experiment with budget subs. If y'all would like to see something like that, kind of like uh, Parker the bass head does with the 12s, let me know. I'll buy a meter with my own money. And if y'all want me to do budget 15s, if we have enough people decide on it, we'll figure out a way to donate money for the subs. I'll let y'all vote on what subs y'all want to see ran. And I'll build a good box for a single 15. And we'll test them out. I'll push them to the limits. And if I can get enough money to buy a good used amp, I'll buy another amp so I'm not worried about blowing the amp. And I'll totally smoke the subs. We'll see how much power they'll take and what they'll meter. And we'll just do like Parker does, but with the 15s. So if y'all want to do that, let me know. And we'll figure something out. And I'm out. Peace.